Jesus feeds the 4,000. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, but where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the, afterward, the disciples put, picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 were present. After he had sent them away, he got into his boat with his disciples and went to the region of Dalmanthuam. The Pharisees came and began to question Jesus. To test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. Then he left them, got back into the boat, and crossed to the other side. The yeast of the Pharisees and Herod. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread, except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. They discussed this with one another and said, It is because we have no bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see, and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they replied. And when I broke the seven loaves for the four thousand, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? They answered, seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? So today is a graduation Sunday. So we celebrate the five people who are graduating. Uh, this year. So the graduation is also called commencement. Commencement you begin. So as you begin new life, new chapter in your life, it's very important to remember what God had done last four or five years. So that as, as you go forward, you will believe that God will provide again as you as he did in the past. So that's the so that's why this passage is very appropriate for today's graduation Sunday. Love God. Love God. Love the title of my message is Don't You Remember? So let's read our key verse, verse 18 together. Okay, let's go. Do you have eyes but fail to see, and ears but fail to hear, and don't you remember? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may God grant us your word, which gives life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Winston Churchill said, those who do not learn from history are bound to repeat it. What it means is that if we do not learn from past mistakes, we repeat the same mistake. Those who do not remember the past history repeat the same mistake again and again. When the Israelites made the great exodus from Egypt, they praised God. But when they had a small difficulty with the lack of water in the desert, they forgot all the mighty works and began to be fearful and complained that they would die of thirst. When they crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, they praised God loudly. But when their legs hurt and had nothing to eat, again they forgot all the mighty work of God had done for them and began to complain. If only we had died in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the foods we wanted. They didn't remember that they were suffering as slaves. They only remembered all the pots of meat they ate. And you brought us out to die of hunger. 
So when they do, did not remember what God has done in the past, the entire generation perished in the desert, except Joshua and Caleb. So that's why Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. So may God help us remember what God has done in the past. If God has been faithful in the past, He will be faithful in the present and in the future. If He has provided in the past, He will provide us in the present and in the future. So in today's passage, Jesus helped His disciples to remember the previous miracles, especially feeding 5,000 and 4,000, so that they may open their spiritual eyes to see who Jesus is. Look at verses 1 and 2. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. They were about 4,000 people. You may say that this is very similar to Jesus feeding the 5,000, and we have nothing to learn from this passage. But as we see later, this miracle serves as an important event to open the spirit, his disciples' spiritual eyes and ears. When Jesus fed the 5,000 in chapter 6, the crowds are mostly Jews. Now Jesus is in the region of Decapolis, the Gentile region. So the people gathered are mostly Gentiles. Why have they been following Jesus around the countryside for three years? I think we can find the answer. If we look back and remember in chapter 5, Jesus healing the Gerasian demoniac, the one who has been tormented by 6,000 demons. Jesus cast the demons out into 2,000 pigs. And after Jesus cast out the demons, the people there were scared that they would lose even more, more than 2,000 pigs. So they asked Jesus to leave their town. But this man went all the towns of the Decapolis and told the people how, what Jesus had done for him, how Jesus changed his life. So these people had known this man as a crazy guy who didn't wear clothes and lived in among the tombs, cut himself and couldn't be restrained with the chains. But they saw the amazing transformation and they, and they came to Jesus. So this is the result of the formerly demon-possessed man's evangelism. The people were mostly helpless people with their physical elements as well as their sin sicknesses. And they were unemployed people. If they had a job, they would be at their workplace. But because they had no job, they have they been following Jesus. And Jesus saw their damaged human condition and oppressed spirit. Jesus healed many sick, sick people. Jesus served them by teaching the word of God for three consecutive days. Many did not have a Bible knowledge as, because many were Gentiles. So, th so Jesus spent three days to teach some basic truth of God. And it was an intensive conference. But Jesus believed that they would be well if they accepted the word of God. Jesus believed the word of God would plant new hope and new life in their despairing spirit. So with great compassion and enthusiasm, Jesus taught them three days straight to look at verse three. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. Jesus loved the crowd for they were eager Bible students. Even after three days of intensive Bible conference without food, there were still more than 4,000 people gathered. So how did the disciples respond? Look at verse 4. His disciples answered, For where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread 
even. If they remembered what Jesus had done in feeding the 5,000 with the five loaves and two fish, they would have said, you can feed them, sir, as you did before. But they expressed their helplessness. So it shows their spiritual dullness. They were slow learners. Sometimes when you look at others, there seems to be no spiritual progress and we get discouraged and disappointed. We need the faith and spiritual eyes to see others as Jesus saw his disciples. We must have faith and hope in God and continue to plant the faith and leaving the word of God in others and pray for them. Jesus' disciples often looked as if they were never growing and never changing. However, they were slowly growing in the compassion of Jesus. Therefore, we should not despair of ourselves, our children, or Bible, our Bible students, but keep on teaching the Word of God as the fundamental solution of all the, our life problems. Jesus knew that his disciples had no resources to feed the 4,000. Jesus treated, but Jesus treated his disciples as his co-workers and asked them for their opinion about how to feed them. Look at verse 5. How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. So it seems to be useless to ask his disciples who had no resources. But it was the beginning of co-working. When you ask others' opinion, it can be the beginning, beginning of working together and building a relationship. So humanly speaking, it was impossible for Jesus to feed the 4,000 with the seven loaves and few small fish. So what did Jesus do in this impossible situation? Look at verses 6 and 7. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks. He broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. Jesus prayed to God and depended on God, believing that he would feed them. So what was the result? Look at verses 8 and 9 8. The people ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 men were present. When Jesus prayed and the disciples walked together with Jesus, God blessed them and they could feed 4,000 hungry people. They not only fed them, but also they picked up seven basketfuls of leftovers. So those who came to Jesus were fully satisfied. So now look at 9b and 11. So after he sent them away, he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the region of Dalmanuta. So they were in the, this region of Decapolis. And then they went to Dalmanuta. Dalmanuta, they say it's near uh, Magdala. So Magdala is the hometown of Mary Magdalene. So this is a Jewish territory. So the Pharisees came there and began to question Jesus. To test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. Apparently, the Jesus feeding the 5,000 or 4,000 was not enough. They asked for a sign from heaven. So here, a sign from heaven may refer to a fire from God, fire from heaven, such as uh, in the time of Moses and Elijah, or sun stopping, like in the time of Joshua. So they did it to discredit Jesus. You know Woody Allen? Woody Allen is a famous... Uh, movie director, he said that if God would, me give me, God would give me a clear sign, I would believe, like a large deposit in my Swiss bank account. <laughs> <laughs> so even if Jesus showed such miracles, they would not believe. Unbelief will always find a way to reject the truth and drive itself down to utter darkness. So Jesus saw this and said in verse 12, He sighed deeply and said, Why does generation ask for a miracle sign? 
I tell you the truth, no sign will be given to him. So Jesus sighed out of deep sorrow for their unbelief. Then Jesus left them, got back to the boat, and crossed to the other side. While they were in the boat, what was in the disciples' mind? Look at verse 14. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread except one loaf they had with them in the boat. They were thinking about the leftover bread they had forgotten to bring. The disciples just had eaten the, with the 4,000. But now when they were hungry again, they began to worry about their next meal. They regretted that they had forgotten to bring the leftover. Maybe they began to rebuke and blame each other for not remembering to bring bread. You can imagine what it was like. So like, for example, Andrew, I thought you were in charge of leftover bread. And Andrew said, Andrew, you must be mistaken. I heard Jesus tell James to bring bread. <laughs> no, Peter was in charge. I clearly heard Jesus tell him to bring the bread. So they back and forth arguing. So then what did Jesus say to them? Look at verse 15. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. Have you seen the yeast? Yeast is you, what you put in a br bread flour to make the bread rise. So yeast is so small and it's nearly invisible. But once you put in a dough, it influences the whole batch. It makes the bread, it changes the dough. Likewise, unbelief is highly contagious. So for example, when Moses sent out 12 spies to explore Canaan, Joshua and Caleb had a faith in God that they could conquer the promised land. But the other 10 spies had no faith. They saw themselves as the grasshoppers and the Canaanites as giants. And they spread their unbelief to the entire Israelites so that all the Israelites rebelled against God and they all perished in the desert. So likewise, Jesus worried that the unbelief of the Pharisees could plant doubt and fear in the hearts of young disciples. So how did the disciples understand Jesus' warning about the east of the Pharisees and that of Herod? They discussed this with one another and said, it is because we have no bread. I mean, can you imagine their dullness and no understanding? To look at verse 17. Away of the discussion, Jesus asked them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Jesus had already performed so many miracles. So what are they? So let me refresh your memory. <laughs> of what Jesus' miracles in Mark's gospel. Jesus drove the demon out of a man in the synagogue in chapter 2. And Jesus healed a man with leprosy and a paralytic. Jesus claimed, calm the stormy sea. Jesus raised the Lazarus daughter from the dead. Jesus fed the 5,000 with the five loaves and two fish. Jesus walked on water. Jesus healed the Greek woman's daughter from demon possession. And he healed the deaf mute man. Jesus fed the 4,000 with the seven loaves. All this, through these miracles, Jesus showed that he is the Son of God with endless compassion for those in need. Did the disciples need any more proof to trust in Jesus? The disciples should have believed that as long as Jesus was with them, everything would be fine. But whenever they confronted the problem, they completely forgot who Jesus is and what Jesus had done. Instead, they were filled with worries and anxieties. So to Jesus, the real problem was that they did not remember what Jesus had done. The disciples should have found the spiritual meaning of Jesus' miracles and had it permanently imprinted on their minds and hearts. So one of the most basic conviction 
as a Christian is this. Jesus, the bread of life, will feed us. Jesus has the infinite supply of God's provision. So even in the very tough circumstances, we can say with Paul, my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So that's our conviction. So look at verse 18. Do you have eyes but fail to see, ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember? Jesus may have been tempted to dismiss his disciples and choose a new one. If it was the case, then we would have been dismissed as a Bible teachers long time ago. But Jesus is different. He's infinitely patient. Jesus patiently taught his disciples again and again. Look at verses 19 and 20. When I broke the five loaves of the 5,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they replied. When I broke the seven loaves of the 4,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? They answered seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? Jesus specifically reminded, reminded them of the two events of the feeding the 5,000 and the 4,000. Jesus helped his disciples to remember what he had done. Through these two events, Jesus wanted them to learn God's love, compassion, and provision in any situation. Jesus wants us to approach human problems. We have so many problems by remembering what God has done in our lives. It's not astonishing that in the present moment, in the stress of present moment, when you have a lot of stress, we forget all the fulfillments of God's care in the past, what God has done, and only thinking about our problems, how we are going to survive. So why in the world are you thinking about what ifs and all the worst case scenarios when you should think about God's grace in the past and trusting God? But Jesus is very gentle with us. And he says, do you still not remember? Do you still not understand? As if to say, what more do I need to do? So the symptoms of spiritual ignorance are forgetfulness and worry. So we should remember what God has done in, in us and through us. Then we can believe that God will be there for us in the present and in the future. So one key difference between the believers and unbelievers is, is this. A believer remembers God through events in life even painful events in life. But unbelievers cannot see, cannot see God. They remember the painful events in life, and these memories keep coming back again and again and haunt them. So, for example, in the book of Genesis, Joseph had a very tough life. His mother died early, and he grew up without a mother. At the age of 17, he was sold as a slave. And in Egypt, a woman falsely accused him of a rape, and he was put in prison. In his life struggles, he had so many painful moments. But he remembered God. When he had the first son, he named him Manasseh, and said, it's because God has made me forget all my troubles and all my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim, and said, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. So likewise, by God's grace, we forget, we should forget what we should forget. And instead, remember God's goodness. So when you remember God's faithfulness in the past, we can face the future without fear, without anxiety, because God will be there for us. So when I, when I remember how God provided so far, 
It is amazing. God helped me to finish my PhD more than now. How many years? 28 years. And when I almost failed my qualifying exam. And also I never received financial support from my parents and my parents-in-law since I got married. Even though my salary was, when I was graduated, $900. And my wife worked as a part-timer for $300 a month. But our rent was $450. 450 But we managed. God provided always, even though there was sometimes no balance in the bank account. But God always provided. So I can believe that God will continue to provide all my needs in the future. So in this passage, we learn that those who remember what God has done can overcome any situation, live a, live a victorious life. On the other hand, those who do not remember what God has done become slaves of fear and anxiety. So may God help us remember what God has done and live by faith with the assurance of God's blessing throughout our lifetime. Heavenly Father, may God help us remember what God has done as we go forward without fear and anxiety. May God bless the five graduates. Uh, we celebrate what you have done in their lives at, during their time at U of T. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi. When I began my master's studies, I was actually terrified. I suffered from imposter syndrome. That means my self-doubt often, often overrides my feeling of success. I thought I had only accepted into graduate school due to luck not, and not because of my qualifications. I had a fear of being ex exposed as a fraud in front of my colleagues. The same kind of thought controlled my spiritual life as well because I constantly felt unworthy of God's love. I thought I would never be good enough to be used by God to make a difference in this world. Further, I have many worldly desires. After so many years of following Jesus, I even felt that sometimes I would still talk about Jesus, but didn't have that passion and fire inside that I once had for the Lord when I joined UBA six years ago. During this time, my brothers and sisters in Christ helped me and revealed the truth to me. Esther kept trying to tell me how much God loves me. She told me to cry out to God and, re and to rely on Him. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. It shows to me that God once loved me so deeply that he was letting his only son, Jesus, to offer sacrifice so that we can see his internal love and we shall not perish again. By the way, recently I, re I, re I read this verse again with Lasso and I was glad that I gained a new perspective and I could finally picture God's love. Mm -hmm. God's love is genuine. Mm -hmm. Also, my, our, um, my uptown spot Calvin, Sai, Sam, and Lazo, they taught me a lot. They were truly cared about me and concerned of my spiritual growth. They helped me to see and hear, hear when I was spiritually blind and deaf. They told me that church is one body and we are one body in Christ. They told me that, keep, uh, that I should keep everyone accountable. As a result, I gradually realized that I should desire nothing else but God's will. I am loved by many people and by God. My key verse this year is Mark chapter 9, verse 23. All things are possible to him who believes. This year, I prayed so hard for God to help me with many things, not in my will, but in his will. With God's blessing, I got my master's degree at Oise. Now, I have walked this journey and finally made it to the, end, to the finish line. I am thankful for God's work in me. I am here. I am, I am here to testify God's work. I pray that God can continue to help me live by faith, not by fear, and I can trust God wholeheartedly. Thank you. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Sophia's life of faith. 
I thank you that you seeked her out and you brought her to your fold. Uh, Lord, I thank you for these um, two years that she spent in grad school. Uh, Lord, um, even though she had uh, uh, doubts about her aptitude, Lord Jesus, your grace is sufficient for her and to grow her. Uh, Lord, as she uh, starts her working career, Lord, I pray that you can give her the courage, uh, Lord, to follow your will, the courage um, to read your word and practice it. Um, whenever she feels that um, she um, is not able to do something, Lord, I pray that she can look to you. And Lord, I pray that she continue um, to serve in the body of your church, that she can grow to become a Bible teacher, Lord, and also give her life for men. Lord Jesus, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give certificate of appreciation mm -hmm. is given to Sophia. What, how do you pronounce your name? Supan. Supan. Supan is her Chinese name. For participation in the University of Iowa Fellowship at St. George and in our mission to preach the gospel to make disciples of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, when I first landed in Canada, I was both excited and scared. Looking at the unknown streets, feeling a different city vibe, I, it was hard to imagine how I could be in, live independently in a foreign country. Study in the university with my second language and interact with people of different cultures and ethnicities. Four years have passed. I am now proud to say that I have accomplished what seemed too challenging to do. I learned to deal with residential matters such as signing house contracts, doing taxes, and banking, which are essential skills for living independently. I improved my language skills and was able to communicate academic matters with professors, classmates, and worldwide researchers. In addition, I even applied to jobs and received the first salary payments in my life. Most importantly, I joined the UBS family in my first year at an orientation club fair, and my friends in this group have been my important mental support throughout my university life. My UBS family helped me to be a person that I wanted to become. From time to time, I was overwhelmed with academic pressure and extracurricular work. In the midst of anxiety, I seek understanding and support from my UBS family. The weekly Bible study sessions refreshed my perception of my thinking style, and they empowered me to redirect my attention to more important things in life, such as appreciating every person and keeping a pure heart. Learning other members' daily stories also helped me realize that everyone has their own challenges, and what's important is to support each other in overcoming them. With that in mind, I was able to build stronger resilience and enjoy the process of solving problems. Knowing that my friends will always be on my side, I learned to become someone who's always willing to face challenges and overcome them. My UBS family also helped me in drafting, in drafting who I want to be in the future. UBS members come from a variety of countries and cultures in the world, and I was amazed that they all gathered here for the same goals and beliefs. Making friends and learning about their stories, I realized that no matter which culture one is from, they can benefit from lessons on life and love. The, they further shaped my interest in education toward different groups of people, and I hope to be a positive influence to more people in the future. I am certain that I will learn much more from my UBS family, and the life lessons will continue to help me in my future endeavors. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you that you brought Betty to our UBS family in her first year in, at University of Toronto. Thank you that you have been with her and that uh, you have shown her your love and uh, through the UBS family. And I pray, Lord, that you would be with her in her future, that she would continue to grow in knowledge of, of who you are, and that uh, she could rely on you as she uh, faces many challenges in the future. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this certificate of appreciation is given to, how do you pronounce your name? Ichi. 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 But Betty, we call her Betty. <laughs> for participation at, for, in the University of Iowa Fellowship at St. George, and in our mission to preach the gospel to, and make disciples of uh, Jesus.
I was raised in a Catholic family that God has always been present in my life. I knew I was supposed to go to church, read the Bible, and be good. But as, as a child, those were kind of rules to follow. By the time I went to high school, I had started to understand more how it was a love relationship with God. But still, the relationship was based on asking for something and only when I need it. Then the big, big opportunity to study in Canada presented, and I came here. In the beginning, I felt a, mix, a mixture of emotions, anxiety, happiness, and excitement because I was coming to a new country, and I had the privilege of studying in, in one of the best universities, but sadness at the same time because I was leaving my country and my family. Then I started to face many barriers like language, culture, new study methodology, being by myself without my parents. It was a, it was a turning point that made me realize that I need God's love in my life and that I need to develop a true relationship with Him. During my student life at UFT, situations happened and hard times came that I didn't know how to handle. I, could, I couldn't do it on my own. Also, I had my, I had the emotional support of my parents and family. I still needed something else, and it was the presence of God actively in my life. Then I joined UBS. I started going to church, joining, uh, joining the group Bible study, opening my heart and praying, giving thanks, and not just asking for something. Does I know this? That my relationship with God was improving, but not for so long. When I was still far from home, my grandmother passed away, and it hit me so hard that I was furious, and I started blaming God for it. I think that my prayers were not heard at all, and I didn't understand God's point of suffering. Thanks to my parents' support, I could accept what happened and get closer to God again. Because at the end of the day, I want to realize that I need God and His love in my life. At the end of our semester, in my third year of study, again, I was struggling because many things were going on at the same time. My, father, my grandfather's health was really bad. He was at the intensive care unit. Moreover, we were having problems with the landlord of the place where we used to live. We were starting final examination. I found out that I had two difficult exams the same day. I started suffering from insomnia and health problems, affecting my academic performance. I also was so afraid and I didn't know how to handle feelings of hopeless, hopelessness in my life. All I wanted was to quit and go back to my country and be with my grandfather. I prayed and opened my heart to God, and I also I searched, for, I searched for help. I started having an appointment with a certain counselor who helped me to see that there was, everything was not lost, and I had to and I had to go one step at a time. Finally, everything got kind of solved, and I realized that God was constantly teaching me to rely on Him for my strength. Then in my senior year, I was doubting whether I'm applying to a research course. I was not sure if I was capable of getting a position and being able to do research and study at the same time. It was a challenging year, but I trusted in God and I did very well and learned a lot. That is why I chose the verse Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make it straight your paths. Amen. I am so thankful to God for all the blessings I had for putting good people on my way, like all the UBS members, for making for making me strong and finally finishing my studies at UFT. I can see God has used the circumstances in my, in my life to convince me of my need for him. Although I still have many things to understand, I know the opportunities God has given me to learn more about his word and how to apply it to my life. 
Now I also feel anxious and stressed about my career or future studies. There is a lot of uncertainty due to the pandemic. Therefore, my favorite topics are pray, to continually keep building a good relationship with God, have faith and trust in His will. I would like to pray for my career and for their studies for guiding me in making good decisions in this new chapter of my life and for managing my fear, anxiety and stress. Especially now, I would like to pray for my grandfather. He suffered an accident and broke his leg. He has undergone surgery, and I pray for his health, and he can be healed and recover soon. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness and then your mercy and grace in Gabby life. And now we hear and then we uh, witness your uh, love for her. Lord, throughout this four year, as a foreign uh, student living in Toronto without a parent. But how, uh, however, your grace is sufficient to uh, sustain her day by day. And now you give uh, her a successful completion in one of the well-known university in Toronto, Lord. Thank you so much uh, for your love and faithfulness. Lord, this is not the end of her life chapter yet, and it is a beginning for the adventure with the Lord uh, personally in her life. Lord, right now everything seems to be uncertain. However, Lord, please continually bless her and open her spiritual eye to look back and see how you have been faithful toward her, and she may open her heart and be confident in you uh, for what you would accomplish in her life uh, in the future, Lord. And this time of uncertainty will become a memory for her, uh, looking back and see how your thanks, um, how you have accomplished your uh, promises in the midst of this uncertainty and then uh, uh, chaotic situation, Lord. And that you may uh, guide her to the right path and lead her to the best direction for her career and or further education, Lord. Meanwhile, we remember her grandfather, uh, the broken leg. Lord, I pray that uh, you may heal uh, him and restore his head, Lord. Thank you so much for everything you have done in her life. I pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Certificate of appreciation is presented to Gabriela Vasquez Rojas for participation in University Bible Fellowship at St. George and in our mission to preach the gospel and make disciples of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for all being here. And thank you for uh, this ceremony. I'm Gabriela Vasquez Rojas. I'm a senior in the Romans 8.30. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. Mm -hmm. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. In my five years of university life, having God and Jesus as pillars really helped me. Moreover, the word of God really had an important impact on me. This is because in my case, I was born in a Catholic family and country. I came to have faith in God and Jesus since little, and I have always loved them. But most of my life, it just stayed at that. I didn't really work at building a strong relationship with them. So I didn't put much effort, consistency, or time into it. Going to church was, in a sense, a, not really a decision, but mostly an obligation. I still sometimes prayed or had some little conversations with God, but I still didn't really saw the value of the Bible, uh, the Word of God. So I barely read that for a religion course homework. I think it was because I didn't really know how to interpret it. And that stayed like that until uh, pretty much my 20s. Then this opportunity to come to University of Toronto appeared in my life. At that time, I saw it as an easy and awesome opportunity. 
so I decided to go for it. My father supported the idea, but my mom preferred me to not go, but I still decided to come no matter what. In general, I was a good student through my life, so wow. Coming to this prestigious university in the top 20 felt so amusing. And I really thought that I will be strong enough to handle the fact that my family was going to be really far because we are uh, pretty close, we are pretty close to each other. I saw a being far as something secondary that I will overcome easily as the days passed. I had a lot of dreams, hopes, and I was happy that finally my year, I mean the academic one, was giving some real fruit. Thus, I finally came, and at the beginning of university, the new of everything embraced me. It was a new country, a new culture, there were going to be new friends, so I was feeling fine. But then days passed, and the new academic system started to require more and more from me. So things started to shake. I started to feel homesick more and more, and to be overwhelmed for all the assignments, especially the writing ones. So the stress was increased, and my sleep on the contrary was decreasing. However, at the end of that year, I could still hold up my top grades, and I received a new college award. So I ended up feeling satisfied. I went for the summer to my country, Ecuador, and I felt so alleviated and happy again. But then it's time to come back to university and September came to start my first year because before I was in IFP, the National Foundation Program. And I felt so depressed. I am talking uh, back to 2016. I panicked and if I could just decide not to come back at that point, on my life, I would have done so. But too much effort was already put. So that really was not an option. Mm -hmm. During that year, I still prayed and relied on God. But I didn't really have him as my priority or as my true shelter. So first year began, and I was so nervous that in tests and exams, I had to wait like 10 to 20 minutes to regain the tranquility, to stay calm, and start doing them. I can see now that I was putting my academic life at a higher priority than it should be. So most of the time, I felt anxious, like there was no free time, like I was fading. I felt really burdened by all of this. That year, however, something changed. During a club extra, a street fair, I was introduced to UBF by WAPA. Days passed, but I kept that flyer. I sometimes thought, I should go and see how it, how it is, but also I was nervous to show alone by myself because of my shyness. After some time, I came to realize that my friends Patty and Jota were going to there, so I joined them. And at the beginning, I just started to come to worship service once a month when I thought there were some extra time so I would not feel guilty for spending less time at the study. So for me, that time was enough, but it wasn't really. But as the verse says, and having chosen them, he called them to come to him. So there was God, waiting to work more and more in my life. So even though at the beginning of university, I felt lonely, next God called me close through UBF. I then started to read the Bible and understand more the Word of God, so I could put that on practice. And finally, I did put God and Jesus as a priority in my life. I started to come to worship service each Sunday, and not as an obligation anymore, but because I wanted and I needed. And I could feel this change. I started to feel more positive. I didn't panic anymore at exams, and I felt more calm overall. Then I started Bible study with Missionary Lang, and it further helped me mm -hmm. to connect and seek more in God, to stay strong on Him, and it also helped to improve my faith. After that, from second to fourth year, I continued to have up and downs. Sometimes I felt bad or good, sometimes I felt sad or happy, but that was okay because now, I strongly knew that God was there for me. So as Romans 
836, I started to feel his glory. That at the end of second year, I could achieve a life dream and academic goal since I went for two months to Korea for an internship, but I also visited different places there. And through all of that process, God was there supporting me. And still not everything was bright like last year's summer, where I got some financial problems. So I didn't even know if I was going to be able to study my last year. I was feeling depressed, but I continued praying and trusting in God so I could receive his guidance and guia. Yeah, God was there for me and things were fixed. So now I could graduate and finally something that appears so distant and difficult came to be fulfilled. And I am really grateful for all that God and Jesus have provided and that they accompany me always through these past five years, giving, the, giving me the resilience to continue. So I didn't give up. I also feel blessed that God put UBF in my life because more than a church, I found a home. And more than a community, I found a family. Now I just want to say hi to my family. So yep. I will mm -hmm. speak here in Spanish. Um, Hola, buenos días, mami, papi, a mi familia que está viéndome por Zoom. Les quiero agradecer mucho a Flor Calle, Fabián Tellos, mis papis, que fueron pilares fundamentales por todo su apoyo, cariño, protección y por haber estado en este proceso y haber, ay, haberme ayudado a completar esta meta. Y también a mis abuelitos, Carlos Calle y Sara Quinde, quienes también me, a través de sus valores eh, me ayudaron a ser la persona que soy yo y a quien en realidad dedico todo esto, todo este uh, eh, camino que eh, se ha completado y les quiero mucho y gracias. I just want to end the, uh, my reflection with uh, the first Luke 11, 9, 10. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who has receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. So everyone to know that God is there for us in our heart in glorious times, he's there. So uh, don't be afraid because he is there to share his love. Do you have any questions? Yes, thank you so much for blessing your precious daughter, Michelle, to come to Canada and accomplish her study successfully in your grace. Father, thank you so much for helping her in her difficult uh, first time to seek you and to come to you. And uh, finally, uh, find you are the loving father and the sovereign Lord and her shelter, true shelter and uh, uh, the Lord. So that really she could come to you every time whenever she felt difficult and you and she found your love. Father, help her continually to put you uh, the as first uh, priority in your life and continually to seek your will and your uh, glory first uh, and continually love you and uh, continually she can uh, uh, grow in faith and to be a blessing for many. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this certificate of appreciation is presented to Michelle Flo Kalo Kalo Kale Kale Kaye 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 for participation in University Bible Fellowship at St. George and in our mission to preach the gospel and make disciples. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I want to start off reading my testimony. Um, when I was a child, I remember saying to my parents about seeing myself studying abroad. I really felt like it was my destiny and a goal that I really wanted. And finally, after having my scholarship, I finally had the chance to make my dream come true. My first place in mind was Switzerland. I really want to go to the Polytechnic of Zurich but I needed a German prophecy to enter to the bachelor's program. So unfortunately, I abandoned my dream and searched for an English-speaking program 
and that never came to, into my consideration. Uh, I applied very late, and I, I wasn't sure if I make it or not, but I did. Although it was very difficult for me to leave my family, I was pretty excited. During that time, I was a believer, but a passive one, because I didn't use, uh, I don't used to read the Bible, nor do daily bread. I got used to pray at night and attend to Mass most of the Sunday. In the International Foundation Program, I was really excited about everything there because it was new. I made my uncle's father at the airport and his family provided me a full support and love since that day. As the academic year was going, my motivation and happiness were declining as I was facing the new language and new challenges. I, I didn't go to, uh, to that really often. Um, my roommate Paddy showed me, um, I was discussing about uh, the Bible and or faith, and she mentioned about UBS. So then we give it a try and we attend to worship service. So the community was quite friendly, and I was greatly surprised about the lunch. <laughs> so I felt great in the ministry, and it was still far, so we skipped going in several times. By little by little, I have a closer relationship with, with Michelle and Gabby, and we decided to finally live together after finishing ISP. Unfortunately, we did not find a place in time, so we are staying in college one more year. So then we also escape in UVF one more time. In the first year, I was pretty scared because my language and knowledge skills were not good enough. I was pretty shy and not very social. I took a couple of courses that I had a really um, bad time. I feel very sad and frustrated because I was not getting the mark that I was aiming for. I was feeling hopeless and depressed. I, feel, I finally could go back to my country and my family provided me comfort and more motivation to continue. I started the winter semester with more calm and more enthusiasm. I really enjoyed most of my courses, but one in particular was pretty hard. I, I worked really hard to pass, but at the end I did. I was really happy and relieved, and at the same time, I felt bad and disappointed with myself for not doing a better job with my performance. As the new year, a second year, I started, I wanted to renew myself in every aspect, a spiritual, academic, and personal. Paddy, Michelle, and Gabby and me moved to a new house, a new from Metro. I was really excited because it was near UVF, so there was no excuses to continue delaying my reunion with God. I went to worship, I went to worship service on a regular basis. I started Bible study with missionary life, and I started to feel better. However, my academic situation was not improving. I lost faith in me. As the year continued, I continued to attend Bible study and I started understanding more about the context of Genesis and answering some questions that I had a long time ago. Finally, at the end of my second year, I was diagnosed with attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder of ADHD, which is a condition that my brain requires more motivation or dopamine to do certain activities. It was a part of me that finally, like, um, it started making sense and things. So after that, I immediately was part of the accessibility services at U of T. Uh, after that, um, after that notice, I try, I start focusing on myself and my well-being first, rather than my academic, than my academic performance. So I start losing weight, I focus if I keep a good lifestyle on third year, and I start doing that on a regular basis. And also I start improving my relationship with God. Everything looks like improving, but it began to be more challenging as the desired, uh, as the desired outcomes were not observed. I pray to God for guidance and relief from my self-criticism. During this year, I, I was needing to fulfill my practice hours that I was looking for an internship. Since January, I missed the September deadline. I really trust that like the Lord will provide me a good job place, so I relax myself a little bit too much in this part. Academic, personal health, I think become more complicated. Um, so after I finished my third year, I just realized that I have relaxed too much and I was pushing me far to get a position. Then 
Another problem comes with my visa. I have my study permit and my work permit almost expired. I really felt very overwhelmed because everything was going very fast. I felt hopeless and very stressed regarding the situation. I come in the situation to land and we pray together. As applications were submitted, I was really sad to not see any response. Like an Esther approached me to invite me to the Canadian Bible Study Conference. At the beginning, I was not very convinced, but I, I felt really overwhelmed about my situation. Some part of me was just telling me to go. During the conference, I learned a lot about Genesis during the group studies and the fellowships. I really enjoyed the Queen's campus and I feel far on my stress was gone. Lang introduced me to a person that was in Apotex and he agreed to be my reference on my application. I was thrilled and so was Lang. I felt that God really heard my prayer. However, I did not get any position, so I was desperate because I felt that I lost all direction. I started making deals with God and testing him. I got to an inflection point and everything seems lost. And thankfully, my study permit was renewed, so I can start my four year, but my work permit was not. So I lost any hope to find a job. Then I applied to get a research position with Professor McCallion and my faculty. And surprisingly, I get it in 30 minutes. So I was shocked. I finally was leaving slowly. My bitterness that I got toward God during my four year assignment. During my senior year, everything took another direction. I really enjoyed the spaces lab. I have a good team in my classroom. I did great in my courses, and I think I got better day concepts of coming to God in prayer and understanding better what a true relationship with the Lord means. With the Lord means. I am thankful for all the members of UBF, my friends, family, that helped me to go through all the tough times. But I'm especially thankful for God's love and mercy that did not give up of me, regardless of my attitude and my sin. Now I understand that the Lord's plans are perfect, although they are not. They may not be easy, as in James 1, 2 to 4. My brothers and sisters, I think of various steps you encounter as occasions for joy. After all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let this endurance, endurance complete this work that you may be fully mature, complete, and lacking of nothing. I pray that God may continue to transform my heart and may rely on him alone regardless of the situation. Uh, one word, uh, the Lord's plans are perfect. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, your love when you uh, brought your precious daughter, Joshi, to Canada and study here at UOP and uh, uh, very accomplished it all for your program successfully. Father, thank you so much, most of all, uh, helping her to uh, come to you and uh, to experience that uh, you are uh, God and uh, uh, you are hearing her prayer and you are growing her in faith and in love relationship with you during her all difficult uh, situation and trials and uh, uh, in problems. Father, uh, continually help her to come to you and joyfully to accept everything you will and uh, follow and to, to learn continually endurance and uh, be mature, become mature and uh, strong. And uh, 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 Father, uh, help her really to know your love and your uh, uh, grace uh, uh, deeper and deeper. And when she go back to uh, her country back, help her also continually to trust in you and hold on your word and to preach your word and uh, really grow as a disciple maker uh, for uh, many. 
Father, be with her. Continue reading to I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The certificate of appreciation is presented to we call Joseph, but it's a Jocelyn, Marisol, Jaramillo, Lopez for participation in University Bible Fellowship at St. George and for you know in our mission to preach the gospel and make disciples. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you for high graduates. So we really appreciate we congratulate the completion of U of T four years and some five years. Uh, so anyway, as, I, as we mentioned at the, during my message, so they may remember what God has done during those four years or five years of the U of T as they go, they go forward in their next stage of their lives. So that God, they may always believe that God will provide, that God will be there for them. 